Today we're going to introduce some One Piece theories from Japan that aren't well known in the US. In this video, we'll delve into the mystery surrounding Lafitte's true identity and his enigmatic past, as well as the truth behind his devil fruit ability. Furthermore, we'll reveal the astonishing relationship between Lafitte and the five characters symbolized by birds. We'll break down these popular theories from Japan in an easy to understand way, so please watch until the end. If after watching this video, you think, could Lafitte's ability really be related to an owl? Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you're surprised to learn that Lafitte was one of the five birds protecting the world, leave a comment saying, no way. All right, let's dive right in. What's your impression of Lafitte? You might be surprised to know that he's only appeared in about 30 frames throughout the entire One Piece story so far. With such limited information, you may wonder if it's even possible to analyze Lafitte's character in depth. I totally understand how you feel. But today, I've decided to take on the challenge and discuss everything there is to know about Lafitte. Aitro Oda often incorporates the key characteristics of real-life people who inspires characters directly into the One Piece world. First, let's take a look at X-Drake, the captain of the Navy HQ's secret special forces. The name of Drake's ship is the Liberal Hind. You may have noticed the word liberal in the name, but did you ever wonder what hind means? It turns out that hind comes from the name of a real ship called the Golden Hind. The person who inspired Drake's character is none other than Francis Drake, an English pirate and explorer. Francis Drake used the Golden Hind for his circumnavigation voyage. By adding the word liberal to the ship's name, it became the Liberal Hind. In other words, there's no doubt that Red Flag Drake's character is based on Francis Drake. Interestingly, Francis Drake was both a pirate and a naval officer. Similarly, in the world of One Piece, Drake plays the role of both a pirate and a member of the Navy. This parallel is truly astonishing, don't you think? The same can be said for another character, Mihawk. Mihawk's character is inspired by Vlad the Impaler, also known as Vlad III. It is said that Vlad III took the lives of 80,000 people during his lifetime and is a prominent figure associated with Sigasora, a World Heritage Site in Romania. Moreover, Vlad III served as the inspiration for the famous vampire Dracula. Aichiro Oda skillfully incorporates the main characteristics and elements of the real-life figures into the One Piece characters. And the person who inspired Lafitte's character is none other than Jean Lafitte, a character who appears in Disneyland, which he is known to love. In the world of One Piece, Lafitte is known as the Demon Sheriff. So who was the real-life person that inspired his character? It turns out that Jean Lafitte, a historical figure, served as the model for Lafitte. This portrait depicts none other than Jean Lafitte himself. His most notable characteristic was that he remained an enigmatic figure, making it difficult to determine whether he was a good or bad person until the very end. Most of the Disney Resort has two pirate-themed attractions, Peter Pan and Pirates of the Caribbean, included Tokyo Disneyland. Aitro Oda must have been heavily influenced by Pirates of the Caribbean. Ideas like Blackbeard and the Davy back fight in One Piece likely originated from there, and Lafitte is one of those characters. In fact, the entire Blackbeard Pirates crew seems to be modeled after the Pirates of the Caribbean. As depicted in the Vive card, a One Piece encyclopedia, they wear prisoner outfits, drink alcohol, and chase after women. These are all familiar elements from the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction. Do you remember the scene where the Blackbeard Pirates were formed and all the crew members had a mysterious exchange? I believe the location in that scene was modeled after the Tula Ruins in Mexico. Let me explain it in a way that's easy to understand, as it's a bit of a lesser known topic. To put it simply, the Tula Ruins resemble the Indiana Jones or Raging Spirits attractions at Tokyo Disney Sea. The Tula Ruins are the remains of a civilization that flourished on the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. And guess what? The Yucatan Peninsula faces the Caribbean Sea. There's so much more I want to discuss about the connection between the Blackbeard Pirates and Pirates of the Caribbean, but for now, let's focus on Lafitte. Lafitte is portrayed as a sheriff who uses excessive violence, but a sheriff's job is essentially to maintain law and order, so he has both good and bad aspects. Don't you think this aligns well with Jean Lafitte's characteristics? 
He, too, was an ambitious figure whose morality was difficult to judge until the end. It makes sense that Lafitte, while being a pirate, infiltrated the Navy with ulterior motives, given this background. Aitro Oda has skillfully reflected Jean Lafitte's characteristics in Lafitte's character. Remember when Ace and Blackbeard had their duel on Bonaro Island? Lafitte made an appearance in that scene, too. That scene was clearly modeled after a Western movie, with the classic shot of an Ace's cowboy hat flying through the air after a showdown. The setting of Lafitte being a sheriff chased out of the West Blue might also be inspired by Western films. Going back to Jean Lafitte, in the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction that inspired the Blackbeard Pirates, there's a quest to find the treasure hidden by Jean Lafitte. Since Lafitte is an important character in One Piece, this can't be a mere coincidence, right? At the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction in Tokyo Disneyland, the boat boarding area has a specific name. It's called Lafitte's Landing. As it turns out, this landing was actually Jean Lafitte's hideout. He lurked in an inconspicuous spot at the landing. In other words, he was hiding in a port. Think back to the Rocky Port incident. While it was publicly attributed to Law's doing, it's possible that Lafitte was the one pulling the strings behind the scenes. After all, Jean Lafitte himself ruled over a pirate kingdom in the real world. By the way, did you know there's another famous pirate who appears in Pirates of the Caribbean besides Jean Lafitte? He's also prominently featured in the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction at Tokyo Disneyland. That's right, it's the man with the parrot who suddenly appears on the bridge, John Silver. In fact, Lafitte was originally supposed to be named Silver. Take a look at Lafitte's concept art. You can see that he's accompanied by a parrot, right? I believe Aitra Oda was torn between the names Silver and Lafitte until the very end. This only reinforces the fact that Lafitte's character is undoubtedly inspired by Pirates of the Caribbean. Let me share one more piece of trivia. Aitra Oda must be well aware of the connection between John Silver and birds. In Disney's Treasure Island, the one-legged cook, John Silver, also appears with a bird companion. The bird figurehead on Zeth's ship and his favorite food being spicy chicken wings likely stem from this reference. When you look at the fur Lafitte wears, it seems to represent a bird, just like Hawkins Kid and Doflamingo's feathers. In other words, there's little doubt that Lafitte's motif is a bird. So it's natural to think that Lafitte's devil fruit ability is not related to angels, but rather to birds. The question is, what kind of bird could it be? Lafitte possesses hypnotic abilities, and his birthday is March the 13th. In Japanese, there's a way to read numbers as words. If you write 3.13, it can be read as Simon in Japanese, which means hypnosis. Moreover, when you consider Lafitte's distinctive laugh, along with his hypnotic abilities, it reminds you of an owl, doesn't it? At first glance, the connection between hypnosis and owls may seem weak. However, Ayutra Oda has mentioned in a past SBS that he used to watch the famous Japanese character Masked Rider. Masked Rider is a Japanese special effects TV series that has been running since 1971. Similar to America's Power Rangers, a new series is produced every year and is popular among children. However, the Masked Rider series is known for having a slightly darker and more serious tone compared to Power Rangers. Interestingly, there's an owl character in Kamen Rider that possesses hypnotic abilities. Also, remember the scene where Lafitte suddenly appeared in Mary Joa? Since Mary Joa is located on the red line, if one can fly like a bird, it's possible to reach it. Lafitte appeared without making a sound, even surprising Mihawk. Speaking of silence, it certainly evokes the image of an owl, doesn't it? In the past, I've predicted various devil fruit abilities, but for Lafitte, the prediction is relatively simple and intuitive. I believe there's a high possibility that Lafitte's devil fruit is the bird bird fruit model owl. Up until now, I've been analyzing based on logical reasoning. But from here on, I'd like to make a bold prediction. I mentioned that Lafitte is a bird, but actually, many birds appear in the world of One Piece. Just as there are numerous female characters with flower names, there are also a significant number of female characters with bird names. Additionally, there are countless other characters with bird names. Don't you find this a bit unusual? In the early parts of the story, it was mentioned that there were only five types of devil fruits that grant flying abilities in the world. However, by now, that number must have been far surpassed. 
Fujitora and Doflamingo are simply levitating with gravity, while Kaido is just clinging onto flame clouds. Morgans, the user of the bird bird fruit, model albatross, explicitly stated that he can't fly in his own. Insect devil fruit users have also appeared, but insect flight isn't truly considered flight. They're not flying, but rather falling. A crow devil fruit user has also been introduced, but I believe it's likely a paramecia rather than a zoan. Just as gecko moria controls bats, the crow devil fruit user might simply be controlling crows. Morai himself isn't a bat zoan user after all. If the bird bird fruit model crow exists, don't you think it would be strange if the user's name didn't include the word crow? Therefore, the statement that there are only five types of flying abilities in the world likely means that Pell, Marco, and King are the confirmed ones. A common characteristic among them is that they hold positions supporting the top and are always protecting something in the story. I predict that Lafitte also falls in the same category as them. After all, Lafitte is the strategist of the Blackbeard Pirates. Since the last slot hasn't been revealed yet, could it be that Oda Sensei has been laying the groundwork with various bird characters up until now? At this point, I believe the most likely candidate for the fifth slot is Shanks' sword, Griffin. Shanks is also a character who has protected important things, and there must be a deeper meaning behind introducing the concept of imbuing weapons with devil fruit abilities. The fact that only Funkfried, the sword of Spandom, the elephant smile user, has appeared so far makes it feel like there's not enough significance to justify this concept. Funkfried's funk means coward in English, and Fried means free or peace in German. In other words, the sword's name carries a proper meaning. The name Griffin originates from Greek mythology, which is frequently referenced in the world of One Piece, and Griffin is known as a creature that soars through the sky. Taking all of this into consideration, it's possible that Pell, Marco, King, Lafitte and Shanks are characters inspired by birds with flying abilities. So what exactly are they trying to protect the world from? I predict that, in the end, these five birds will engage in a battle to protect the world from Uranus in the sky, in opposition to the five elders. Flying abilities are essential to stop that enormous threat. That's all for today! Here on this channel, we post popular theories about One Piece from Japan. If you like One Piece, we would be happy if you could support us by subscribing to our channel and commenting. Thank you for watching till the end. See you in the next video.